So my name is Dave Ward. I run business and engineering for EC2's pricing models. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about EC2 spot instances, which are a great way of accelerating your application and kind of saving money. Um, and rather than uh, hearing all from me, today we'll hear from uh, three of our customers, uh, Uyala, Numerant, and MapLarge. And they'll tell you about their experiences with spot. Um, but before we get started, I wanted to make sure to level set for everyone here today. So let's get started by talking about um, our different pricing models. So there are three different pricing models that we offer today. On demand, which is pay by the hour. Reserved instances, which enables you to um, pay a low one-time fee and then a much lower hourly fee and get reserved capacity as well. And spot instances. Spot instances enable you to bid on unused EC2 capacity and get savings upwards of 92% off the on-demand price. The trade-off is that you actually have the potential of being interrupted. So if on-demand instances, you um, on-demand and reserved instances, you always have uh, the ability to continue running your instances into perpetuity until you shut them off. Spot, you actually have the potential of losing it at some point. Sorry. So the way that Spot works is that you start by submitting a bid. And this bid price is basically the maximum you're willing to pay for your spot instances. Then what happens is that there's a spot price. The spot price is something that's set by Amazon, and it's based on supply and demand. So anytime the spot price is lower than your bid price, you'll receive your instance. You can run things on them. Any, however many instances you want, you can bid for. And then when the spot price goes above that bid price, you're interrupted. And so it's important to, to understand the potential for interruption um, when you're factoring in which workloads you run on them. You may say, holy cow, I'm going to be interrupted. Uh, what, what applications can I run? And so it's kind of worth framing which applications you should think about running on here. Typically, the customers that we speak to the most um, try to frame their workloads in terms of time to value or time to results. And so what that means is that they have a value in mind for the data that they're working on. And there's some sort of time frame that they're thinking about. And so one example of this is uh, a set of applications, let's say analysis as an example, where by getting the information sooner, the data is actually more valuable. So as an example, you may have some sort of analysis process that runs every day, and that baseline workload runs on reserved instances. But by potentially running those workloads on spot, you may be able to accelerate when you have the analysis, and thereby enabling yourself to do even more things with that, with that information. Or you may be able to accelerate um, the time to results that you give to your customers, um, really beating an SLA that you set out there uh, for them, and actually saving money in the process. The alternative way of thinking about this is that there's a drop-dead cutoff timeline. So think about um, the stock market closes at 4 p.m. on Friday. And by the time that the market opens up on Monday, you need to have your results, or maybe an hour before that. And so there's an absolute drop-dead deadline when you need the information by. But if you have it any time in between, you're perfectly fine. So in those types of workloads, we typically see customers using spot instances almost for their complete workload to start with. And then as they get closer to the final deadline, they start to switch into um, running more on-demand uh, instances, or if they have reserved, maybe using some of those as well. Now, the reason why um, customers think about spot instances, in addition to speeding up their workloads and kind of this um, time to result type uh, time frame or, or paradigm, is really because of the savings. So I just took this screenshot um, maybe last week or so. Um, and these are real prices that are actually on the spot market on the right. And on the left, there's actually the on-demand prices. And in many cases, you're seeing 92% savings up there. So just look at T1 Micro as an example. You have it uh, set up to, um, what is that, 8.7 cents. Um, sorry, I can't read that. Two cents uh, versus, anyway, I can't read it. But um, I need to get new glasses. But uh, the point here is just that you have substantial savings that you can potentially capture by leveraging the spot market. Now, rather than just taking my word for it that you can save so much or looking at the detail page, there's actually a bunch of customers who have actually reported their savings back to us. 
uh, and these are just a couple of them. But as I mentioned, it's not just about the savings, it's about what you can do that you never could do before. It's about the scale of, of your workloads that you're able to capture. And so one great example of this, and this is uh, an, a slightly outdated example, there's actually more recent examples with cycle computing, but cycle computing was able to run a 30,000 30, core cluster, which basically some customers say, or some people say is um, roughly the 30th fastest computer with one gigabyte interconnect um, for less than $1,300 an hour. Um, putting that in perspective, I think that they saved 57% um, over the course of their entire run. So that wasn't possible before. Since you're running in excess capacity, you're getting cores that nobody else could have otherwise gotten any other way. They've actually gone up to 60,000 cores uh, more recently, and there's plans for even larger than that. Another great example is how we're democratizing what people are able to use. And so Lucky Oyster is a one-person startup. Uh, they basically traverse 3.4 billion web pages for less than $100, all using Spot. So if you thought of this before, you know, maybe a year or two ago, that would have taken maybe a month, maybe a year to go through processing. This person did it in less than a day, just basis, uh, on the basis of the scale that he was able to achieve, but also with the, with the cost. I mean, $100 is basically, I don't know, maybe less than what you're paying on your hotel bill tonight. So there's huge potential to do things you otherwise couldn't have done at scales you couldn't have done, accelerating both the results and, and the other options there. So just as a brief overview before we get to the panel, um, there's a bunch of different use cases. Batch computing is one of them, Hadoop, um, testing, web crawling. And in some cases what we're seeing is that people start off with Spot and begin to use other parts of uh, AWS after using that. Uh, one enterprise use case actually um, kind of started that way using testing and it's begun um, to find other uses beyond there. And so really interesting possibilities just because it's um, such, such a low risk uh, type of uh, opportunity to, to really save things and, and get benefit. So with that, I really want to turn it over to the panel to, uh, to kind of go through a, a bunch of their information. So as I mentioned, I don't have actually all the pictures up here. Um, we have a number of different panelists today. Um, so I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves um, since we're all up here. Uh, and then um, each, each company will give a brief summary of um, kind of what their use case is and what they're doing with Spot. So if you want to start. Hi. Uh, my name is Nimrod Hufin. I'm the SVP of engineering at Wheel. My name is Chris Doherty. I'm the technical lead for video ingestion and processing at Wheel. I'm Nigel Duffy. I'm the CTO at Numerous. I'm Brandon Allgood. I'm Director of Scientific Computing at Numerit. And I'm Linwood Bishop, and I'm President of MapLarge. Okay. So maybe um, you guys want to share a little bit about sure. your company and your use case? Sure. So we all is a video company. We're a five-year-old startup based in the Valley. Uh, we're started by a few uh, Google engineers. And what we basically do is provide a full-stack video platform for some of the biggest media companies in the world. So if you go to ESPN.com and you watch a video, you're actually using our platform. That sort of implementation. Uh, we have been an AWS uh, shop from the very beginning. Uh, our physical footprint is extremely limited. Uh, and we, uh, we've been evolving along with the services that Amazon provided. Uh, if, a, a while back, we switched a lot of our video processing uh, to AWS and quickly learned how to use spot instances very effectively, both to gain scale and to deal with variability. When you think about video processing, one of the interesting things is that the volume of processing kind of fluctuates very, very heavily throughout the day. And we see our video processing fleet go between somewhere between 200 and 2,000 nodes over the course of 24 hours in a kind of cyclical way. And Spot Instance has made it amazingly doable for us and help us reduce cogs very significantly as well. So, uh, so Numerate is also a Bay Area company, also five years old, also been using AWS since the beginning. Um, and, uh, and what we do is uh, we're basically a deep analytics uh, company for the pharma industry. And so we do things like next generation sequence analysis, but primarily our focus is on uh, drug discovery. So we use machine learning to predict the properties of small molecule compounds and then search very large spaces of chemistry on the order of billions of compounds to identify compounds that are worth making and testing. 
And so each of those evaluations can take between, say, 11 seconds and five minutes per compound. And so we use a lot of compute. So on any given project, we'll scale up basically to as much spot as we can get and then uh, scale back down again when it's done. Um, you know, the benefit for us with spot obviously is cost, but also uh, the ability to, to, to achieve that scale. Um, uh, I think, I guess, you know, just in terms of architecture and how this thing is put together and how it works, um, we built a, a kind of piece of middleware called Pneumatics, which is uh, a tool for scaling data flows, elastically scaling data flows. And um, we're actually putting it out there for, for more general use, um, so if any, anybody's interested. Um, but essentially what this does is there's a master node that nodes register with, um, and they, they basically uh, send a heartbeat, and once that heartbeat is recognized, that node joins the cluster. If the heartbeat ever disappears, then the master node stops sending work to that, uh, to that node. And so it behaves very, very well in the context of spot, where nodes can, can come and go away very, very quickly. Um, and I think that's really the key to, to uh, our successful use of spot. Again, I'm uh, Linwood Bishop with MapLarge, and uh, we provide a platform for big data analytics, um, interactive visualization, and publishing. Um, our clients range from large online uh, media properties who use our uh, data APIs and infographics um, to display them on high traffic uh, web properties, um, to corporations with big uh, data, and they want to run custom analytics on them and uh, visualizations in dashboards. Um, or in customer workflows that they're developing. Um, we got, uh, we started using Spot when we had a customer that had a really complex network um, graph problem that they wanted to uh, compute and analytic for. And um, they had a really hard deadline that they had to hit. And so they didn't have the internal uh, hardware infrastructure to be able to pull it off on time. Um, and we had been using uh, Amazon for a while and we said, hey, why don't we uh, run this out on, uh, on spot um, because we can realize significant cost savings uh, by running it there and also we can uh, scale it um, to many machines. Um, so we set up their analyst, uh, several analysts each had a uh, workstation um, that had a, uh, a console that allowed them to work with the levers in their analytic. It would go run this on 500 or 1,000, you know, kind of machines. Um, they would see the result look at it in our visualization API, see if it made sense. And after a number of iterations, they kind of came back with, uh, this is the settings that we want to run it on for the whole data set. And then, um, and then we ran it uh, across uh, thousands of machines, um, basically, um, to get the job done in time. Um, so Amazon Spot uh, definitely helped us out, accomplish that task. And now we're um, doing that many more times uh, for them and for other customers. So um, just to kind of summarize and kind of get to the nuts and bolts of it, um, I guess, what's the ultimate value that, that you guys see that you're getting out of spot? And whether that's cost savings or accelerating your workloads or whatever that is. So for us, it's, it's, it's two things. One, like I said, it's the ability to do a high variability in the capacity we have. Uh, and we're starting to apply this to other problems as well, uh, things in the realm of recommendations and, and, and other kind of in compute intense and systems, and the other is cost. So for, for sure, uh, we saw kind of double digit, 30, 40% cost savings, um, on which for us translates directly to, to cogs, because we're doing things that customers pay for directly. Cost, ingesting a video costs that much money. Our margin depends on our ability to reduce costs for doing that. Yeah, for us, obviously, it's cost um, also. But I think maybe more importantly is the ability to scale. So. Um, there's an adage, I guess, that goes, you know, you want, to, uh, you want to get the answer while you still remember what question you asked and why you asked the question. And, and so in science, it's very important to be able to turn around your, your tests very, very quickly. And so we've shortened timelines from, say, a month of wall clock time to a day of wall clock time. And that matters a lot. Yeah, and thirdly, obviously, uh, cost, cost, cost um, is, uh, it was definitely a huge driver. Um, with us, but really, especially when we were initially getting started, we had uh, such a, a hard deadline, as I was speaking, that we just needed to be able to scale very quickly. And um, we probably could have had a more efficient algorithm. You know, at the end of the day, we've made our, our algorithms uh, more efficient since then for this particular uh, customer. But because we had such a tight timeline, Spot gave us the capability to kind of take what we had, brute force it just on a number 
of machines and, and get the job done and get the deliverable. Um, so, I guess directed at Numerate, um, I'm curious about, I know that you all thought about your business case internally about whether or not to move on to Spot or not. Can you maybe walk us a little bit through how you built that business case internally about whether or not you wanted to run on, on Spot or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, the, the challenge obviously is Spot can go away and it wasn't clear to what extent that uh, would happen. Um, and I think our experience is that Spot is, tends to be very, very stable over time. But there are times where in the course of a day or a week, you'll lose everything, you know, 10 times or 20 times. Um, and so you have to be able to handle that. And so that, you know, creates um, some requirement for doing some engineering. Um, it turned out that um, we had wanted to simplify our system anyway. We'd originally built this platform to work on standard clustering tools like SGE. Um, and we had, you know, kind of lifted SGE and run it on on-demand nodes, and SGE did not perform well in the context of thousands of, of nodes disappearing and coming back and disappearing and coming back. Um, and so this basically accelerated our requirement to re-architect uh, that layer, that uh, kind of assignment of cores to, or assignment of work to cores layer, um, which was the right thing to do anyway, because you know, SGE really was useful uh, in the context of a traditional cluster to share that cluster. But, <laughs> Um, on the cloud, there's no point in building shared clusters. You know, everybody just, just gets their own. Um, and especially with spot being so cheap, everybody should just get their own. And so I think the argument internally for us was, you know, what is the trade-off between the engineering effort and the cost savings we're going to achieve? And I think we actually greatly underestimated the cost savings we're going to achieve. But the engineering effort ended up being basically a couple of weeks. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't so that big a deal. in terms of cost savings, maybe you can give us maybe a percentage or a number or something? Yeah, anything. so we've seen cost savings. It obviously depends on... Uh, on exactly where the, uh, the on-demand price is and what the floor and the spot price is, but, but we've seen savings as high as 92%, and um, now it's more like 85%, um, and that on a given project might be $30,000, so pretty significant for us. Okay. Um, Map Large, uh, so Linwood, I think that uh, one of the interesting things is you built an application pretty much from scratch um, and kind of based on a business need out there. Maybe you can kind of Tell us how your thinking has evolved and how your application's evolved, you know, as you've become a more sophisticated spot user. Yeah, so when we first got started, we, we had this application um, that, could, that could be distributed. We, we were running it um, on, on uh, Amazon. Uh, but when we go back to the very beginning, uh, I was telling Dave, we we architected it in such a way where all the application had to do was uh, make a, an HTTP request to get an ID and download the source file and then do work on it. And then um, it could almost save that to a shared drive on the instance. So what we found was is we had our application and with very few small changes, basically having it go to the outside world and, and download a file, we were able to deploy it and work on a distributed problem. And we didn't do any special coding uh, for Spot or Amazon. Basically, we just cut it into an AMI, which is the, the image that they have on the, the Amazon cloud. And we just went in the Spot UI console on the web console and said, uh, turn on 5. And it started working. And we're like, OK, turn on 50. And then we turned on 500, and it, and it uh, started working. And then over time, uh, especially after the first project, when we met our deadline, um, and had more time to go back and work on the engineering to make it more efficient, um, to make it less labor intensive. We started using the command line tools and some scripting around that, and then ultimately we've programmed in uh, full-fledged against the, uh, the API. But I think the key takeaway is, is that if you have an application that as long as you can make it where it starts to take distributed workloads with a very small, small amount of programming, you can get it on the spot and you can start leveraging really the power of, of just an, a number of instances that you never would have probably been able to do in-house. So one thing I, I just I want to make sure to remind everyone, we do have two people in the back. Feel free at any point to go over them, write down some questions, and they'll, they'll hand some to me later. Um, but I, I do have a number that I'm going to keep working through. But we do want to make sure that we're addressing any of those questions that you have uh, throughout this presentation. So. Um, We've talked a lot about scale, and I think it's probably a very interesting thing just to kind of give people an idea of what's the maximum we've ever run on spot. 
So maybe we can start with Linwood and kind of work backwards. Yeah, so uh, in terms of number of instances, somewhere around 5,000 instances. In terms of number of cores, I think um, somewhere around north of 10,000 uh, cores. Four and a half petabytes of uh, disk space, 30 terabytes of memory, um, all at one time uh, working on these, uh, on these problems. Yeah, so uh, for it, at Numero, the we, we typically run 10,000 cores. Um, we, our, our workhorse is the C1X large, so we'll typically launch, you know, 1,250 C1X larges, and if you do that, it's, it's $10 for 1,000 cores. Um, so it's, uh, that's kind of our standard, and we've, again, yeah, kind of gone a little bit north of 10,000 cores. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact numbers. I think at one point we topped out between uh, 3,000 and 5,000 instances. I'm not sure how many, 5,000? <laughs> I'm not sure how many cores there is. Nice. It's a C1X large, so. Okay. So um, I guess this is directed towards Uyala. I know that, um, or if I remember right, I believe you have a workload that um, when accelerated, it provides more value to your customers. So can you, can you help us understand how you think about scaling? When do you scale up? When do you scale down? How do you go through that process? Uh, we have a sort of a, a complicated set of metrics based on how many uh, how many videos we have waiting for processing, how long they've been waiting for processing, the priority of those of those videos um, as they come in from uh, from different providers, and so um, it's not that's changed over time. We've been able to make that more efficient, um, but that we have we actually have an auto scaling component that handles bringing up and taking down instances, and if we if we um, if spots end up not being available, we have to spin up on demands. We're typically 100% spot, um, but uh, our you might say that our traffic our traffic varies, but our demand is inelastic. Um, if we we can't just sit on videos once customers upload them, we have to transcode them pretty much right then. Um, so if spots aren't available, we switch to on demands, and then the auto scaler preferentially shuts down on demands when the when the traffic is passed um, to save money, and that makes actually a huge difference. So uh, I guess a, a similar. Question for MapLarge. Um, I know you have a strict SLA when you need to get things done. How do you think about that since it's slightly different? Right. Um, so a lot of our, our problems um, are work items um, that come down. Uh, some of them might take longer, longer than others. And we've worked really hard to kind of get the algorithm uh, set up in such a way where, where they can be really small. But for, because Spot can just shut off on you, um, what we, what we in, especially getting started, instead of architecting some fancy solution, we just said, okay, we'll take the really hard problems and we'll put those on on-demand instances um, or bigger nodes on on-demand instances so they had more compute power and we just kind of manually uh, shifted those over. Um, and then all the small stuff um, can go on spot and if it turns off, you know, so be it, uh, we lose those you know, that little run, but maybe we've only lost an hour and then we turn it back on again a few hours later when the, the price has changed um, or whatnot. But as you start to get, and when you really have a hard deadline, um, you, you need to sit back and say, what's my longest running process? And you need to make sure you start those first, probably put them on an on-demand instance and make sure that you get those hard things done that don't, you know, push you off, uh, push you off your deadline. Excellent. Um, so, to numerate, in terms of some of our previous conversations, it sounds like you learned a lot about how to make your application more reliable when you move to spot, just because nodes would disappear at, uh, at intervals. Can you share some of those learnings about what, how you made your application more reliable or things that maybe some of the group can take away from that? Yeah, so uh, the, our, our system, as Nigel was explaining, is, is, a, is a, the pneumatics platform is able to execute um, data flows. And what we do is, when we, are, when we were first thinking about the cloud, we were thinking about, okay, at the time, we, it was, it was a, AWS wasn't around, and so we didn't quite know what the cloud was gonna look like, but we kinda understood some of, some of the things. So one of the things we did is we, we, we could assume nothing. So one of the things we, were, we decided you know, when we were architecting uh, was uh, you can't assume a shared file system. So we built a system that uh, what happens is a node will come up and uh, a small executable will be launched and then that sends a heartbeat back to the head node which, and the head node realizes, okay, I can start sending work. Um, 
all of all of the all of the all of the data is pu pulled and pushed to S3, and we also because it is a data flow graph, we can use memoization. So if, for example, a, a, a node goes down halfway through executing a, a data flow, you still can, when, that, when you resubmit that data flow to another, to another node, it can then take advantage of the fact that, that the previous node had memoized uh, the calculations to S3. Uh, so memoization, uh, making sure that, that, that the work was divided into what we call worklets, and that those worklets were, you know, uh, anywhere on the on the scale of seconds to to minutes. So that so that when spots go down, all that happens is that that five minute work workload gets resubmitted in a queue and redistributed. So it's it's really about memoization to S3. S3 is kind of a a, a shared memory system, and just chunking your stuff uh, smart, and then just make make it. You know, so it scales. Make sure that you're 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 fairly decentralized, so that the workers kind of when they when the machines come up, they register themselves, and they are the ones that ask for work. So I would say those three things. So on a on a similar note, um, there's a question from the audience around what do you do to um, to work around instances disappearing to when the spot price increases. So maybe. Um, so so I, I, I second everything that was said here. I think that the. At the end of the day, we, because we grew up on AWS and because of the nature of the problems we're trying to solve, a failure is very much expected. And our entire system from day one, regardless of spot, was architected to handle failing jobs both by notification systems and by timeout systems. And with very few exceptions, our systems are architected to be spot free. And because of that, the switch to spot was, was completely painless to us. It was, don't, don't, Tell, but it was free money. Because uh, we, did, we didn't really change much in our behavior in handling failures. All we did is, is take advantage of the fact that we have a system that can do the same things with a slightly higher failure rate at a much better price. And I think that if you kind of architect that from day one, things become a lot easier. Okay. So um, one of the questions from the audience I think is a really good one, which is we've talked a lot about the large scale. Um, so is spot practical for smaller workloads like? Um, Java servlet applications or web apps. Anyone want to? So I, I think um, one of the things that I try to evangelize to people is that uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of hyper around around cloud computing and, and people people hear cloud computing and they think it's more reliable and it's kind of not actually um, and and. Not only that, but a lot of the fun toys that you get in a data center to help you deal with failure, like virtual uh, hardware, virtual IPs, and all those sorts of things. There's no IP failure, uh, failover. I'm sorry, in, in EC2. Um, so you are you are not only uh, if you want to be a happy uh, cloud computing us user, not only forced to uh, deal very explicitly with failure, but to deal with it in somewhat different ways that are a little less convenient. Um, so for I. We have not had spots um, disappear very much. Um, it's it's fairly rare, and certainly the whole fleet has not gone away in a while. Um, I think about 18, 18, 18 months ago was probably the last time that we lost more than like two at a time. Um, so for long running, uh, but even, even so, for long running long running instances, you would probably want to do uh, on demands instead, because on top of uh, on top of the instance that you have a JSP server, on top of that, you're going to want uh, like load balancers in front of it. And you don't want the load balancers running on spot, um, so you could you could architect that in in, in a reasonable way. I um, it would take a little bit. It would take a little bit of work. Okay. Another question from the audience: If the spot bid is set to the on-demand price, does that ensure the instance will never be stopped? No. <laughs> no, you could be paying a thousand dollars for a spot instance, and it'll it could still be taken away. So, how do you guys bid? Uh, we well, we don't. We actually set we set the bid price to like ten cents below the on demand price. Okay. Um, what about you guys from Numer? Yeah, so we actually set it at. So there's if you look at you can pull up uh, you can pull up the pricing history and like the you know the pricing histories are pretty stable. So we would typically uh, typically do maybe double the the price the average pricing history. And to answer the earlier question, if they do go away when they do, and again I agree it's. It's fairly rare. Uh, we actually just move regions. Uh, we can live rate, live migrate our work from regions. So we'll just follow. We'll just follow it. We'll just follow where the spots are. 
Uh, so we will rarely see a, a gap where nothing's actually being done. I think it's actually really worth building on that point. One of the things that we've seen with probably the most sophisticated spot users, the ones who are able to get more capacity and actually get the most savings, tend to be people who are more agnostic. So thinking about it as though you can get an M2 XL uh, machine, an M2 extra large, or maybe you can get the same, um, you can get an M2 2X large for roughly around the same price. And so becoming slightly agnostic with your instance type, you may actually um, be able to get more instance capacity um, at a cheaper price or by region is another way of doing it. Um, so it's important to think about how can you loosen your constraints. And then yeah, and I mean, we've, uh, we, we deploy around, around the world as well when we're running um, large runs. And um, initially, our pricing strategy was this sort of like default, oh, if I just do it right above the on-demand price, then logically nobody else would do the same thing. Um, what happens is, is that if you get a big user that comes in and uses all the instances that you're, that you're using, then all of a sudden um, the market price will move. And I mean, you'll, you'll be paying what you put in there. Um, so what we when we originally had to just sort of meet a deadline and get it done and we weren't using so many instances um, that, uh, that that kind of strategy sort of works. So you can kind of bootstrap it, especially if you're in a region where there's a lot of excess uh, capacity and looking at the pricing history doesn't change very much over time for that instance. You know, go for it. A couple hundred machines, um, you're probably going to be fine. Get up into thousands of machines, you know, uh, you're, you're having to have a little bit more sophisticated pricing strategy. Now we do sort of start off with like a, a double kind of the market price just to make sure it keeps running. Um, but then we, we closely uh, programmatically monitor and, and handle, you know, what's going on. Okay. I want to comment. I now, I now know who to call when all my spot instances disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this question from the audience is targeted towards Uyala. How much do you save running video on spot as opposed to on-premise? On so so that, that's an interesting question. Um, it depends. It depends on what you mean by running video. Uh, when you look at our architecture, there are uh, lots of nodes that are uh, permanent and really have to stay up. Think about kind of the core MySQL database, the core metadata services that power our, our APIs. They really can never go away. Um, there are types of instances where you just need enough of them, uh, machines that serve actual video to a consumer playing. Uh, and there are machines that you need to be able to fluctuate up and down, like video encoding and, and recommendation calculations and things like that. I think that the, um, the economics for uh, Amazon in general, and spots in particular, compared to your own um, um, data center, vary depending on, the, uh, on these families of, of, of machines or clusters. Uh, we absolutely are doing and are going to do more um, physical. We're also involved in doing work with private clouds that, that large telcos are building all over. Um, and, and this question is not just a generic one. I think you need to kind of figure out the model you're using, what's the cost of owning metal, and you need to be really smart about calculating all the cost of owning metal, it's not just the metal. Um, and compare it to spot and compare the uh, ability to do scaling up and down the variability and seasonality and whatever your business calls for. Uh, so it's not a simple kind of yes, no. There are cases where metal is cheaper, and the convenience and the variability you get from spot there is, is, is hard to compete with. Okay. So um, this question is for the entire panel. What are some of the gotchas or surprises that you, that you experienced with spot as, as you, um, I guess, moved over? Do you want to start? Uh, uh, yeah, so do I. What, are the, what were the gotchas? Um, here, I can start. All right, go for it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's, there's definitely uh, some gotchas. One, if you're running, um, uh, one, make sure your credit card limit is set high enough to pay the bill, right? <laughs> um, and, you, and you got a Miles credit card. Um, two, uh, your EBS, if you have EBS-backed instances and you're starting to run a lot of them, um, you need to uh, be in contact with uh, sales and make sure there's limits on the number of uh, EBS drives you have and sort of the total deployed EBS package you have in each region, I believe. And then, um, so there's some limits like that and you kind of need to test for those because what happens is, and we had this happen several times when we were getting started is, 
let's turn on a bunch. And we turn on a bunch, and it's like midnight, and we're like trying to meet the deadline by 6 a.m., and all of a sudden it says, like, you cannot turn on any more instances. And we're like, why? You know? And we didn't have support, so you should have support, because we couldn't contact anybody and, and whatever. So eventually we got all these things uh, straightened out. But as you really start to scale beyond 100 or so kind of instances, you need to make sure you have uh, limits uh, raised for what you're doing that you have access to support um, for sure when you're doing this type of thing because you could be spending hundreds or thousands of dollars an hour and you can't afford to lose that time even especially when you think about how much your programmers cost um, so yeah that's a that's that's a good point actually um, there are there are limits on the resources that you can you can order from uh, from AWS and they are um, I think still not visible to uh, the AWS users and in fact visibility within Amazon is still an ongoing project, as I understand it. So, um, no. no, I'll no. Um, We've gone through this exercise a couple times. <laughs> so that's that's a that's a sort of that's a sort of routine thing where, where we um, and we occasionally probe for that. And that's that's probably the biggest one, other other than you know, things fail. Yeah, just to, uh, so there are a couple of things that I I've thought of and. Uh, Resource, resource limits is, yeah, you make sure you understand completely what your resource limits are. But uh, more importantly, so there are two ways you can request a spot instance. You can request a spot instance that when it goes down, it goes away. Or you can, or you can do a persistent request. Um, be aware, be, be, be very careful when you do a persistent request because, and make sure that your engineers and everybody knows that it's persistent because we, you know, I've had engineers bring down the cluster and then f five minutes later, it came back up, and they had already just assumed it was gone. Uh, so, so in terms of cost control, make sure make sure you're taking care of that, and also, you know, test, 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 because you don't want software that brings down your machine, uh, and then so then you've got it going up and down, and you get charged for a full hour if you bring it if you bring it if you bring it down. So if you've got a persistent request, and you've and and an in, and you've been given an instance, and you bring it down. And that persistence request then causes another instance to come up. That's you've now been charged for two hours. So I guess I be, be careful about that. That's an interest. That's an interesting. Uh, I had forgotten about that, but that's an interesting cost optimization uh, point. Is you can uh, preferentially shut down machines and start bleeding them off at about ten minutes to the hour, and shut down machines that are at the close of their hour. And that actually makes a that actually makes a significant difference in your cost. So actually, that kind of leads into the next question, which is, uh, you have to commit to one hour when you buy a spot instance. Are you guaranteed to have that for at least one hour? And also, how does that work if we take away your instance during that, that hour? I'm happy to answer the question. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Do we, do we get charged for that? Yeah. So um, I just figured I'd see if I could get any free work. Um, so in terms of committing to one hour, um, if we interrupt your instance during that hour, what happens is you're actually not charged for that hour. Um, so in a way, uh, that kind of plain chicken with spot um, is a way that you can kind of optimize your cost um, by waiting until the end of the hour, right? Um, and then are you guaranteed to get it for at least one hour? And the answer is no. Um, and this kind of goes into the, actually the next question, which is um, how often does the spot price change? And it actually can change, let's say, any infinitely small unit of time, but let's say once a minute. Um, so the minimum amount of time that you can get is a very small portion of time. Uh, with that said, you don't pay for that last hour, so if you only get it for a minute, it's really no loss on your part. Um, so what we try to do is minimize that risk to you as, as you're using Spot. Um, and uh, it kind of plays into your interruption strategy so that if you're doing checkpoints, um, fairly regularly, that last hour really isn't as much of a, a pain. Um, with that said, one of the things that I wanted to, to kind of get into as we're, we're kind of getting close to wrapping up, um, one thing that I wanted to announce today uh, is that now if you go to the AWS webpage for Spot Instances, we have something called Spot Labs. Uh, Spot Labs is this uh, new program that actually enables you to um, uh, basically participate in our private betas. One of the interesting things we found about spot instances is that um, there's nothing like it anywhere else. And what that means is that everyone's use case is slightly different and uh, the needs out there are slightly different. And so we really want to work very closely with all of you and uh, really kind of evolve the, the product 
and the service with each of you. And so Spot Labs, the goal of it is to give you access to preliminary features. Uh, right now our very first feature is actually notifications, which is another one of the questions that was coming up, like how can you monitor the spot price or interruption? Um, and so our goal is to test things out, see if, if people like them or not, uh, evolve the features with, with everyone. And so I'd encourage you to go out to the AWS webpage on spot instances uh, and sign up uh, for Spot Labs. Um, so, uh, as a takeaway. And then, I think we have time for maybe one or two last questions. Uh, so one of the questions was, how do you budget for spot instances, given the variability? So, perhaps. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, when, when we first got started, I mean, we kind of had to wing it and, and deliver a big bill. Um, you know, so it, it, it uh, I think the best way to budget for it is to look at your work items, take, figure out a small one and a big one, how many you have, and, uh, and then start to calculate it against a spot, and then maybe add 25% or something like that uh, for failure. So for us, it's actually simpler. So the work we do is not optional, right? When, when, when a piece of work comes in, we have to deliver on that piece of work. So. Um, the easiest way for us to budget, which, which is kind of, kind of what we do, is to figure out what, what's the worst case scenario for us, which is falling back to on demand or to reserve one year or to whatever model you want to use. Um, and then, hey, you have bonus money left at the end of the year and you hand it off to the team. Uh, so, so figure out something to do with the money. But the, 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 I don't think spots is really about budgeting. It's not about the predictability. It's about the potential of, of taking, taking advantage of a market that's not perfectly efficient. And, and gaining some of that money. Okay. And I think uh, probably one of the, the hardest questions for last, which is, um, so there's concerns out there. One of the concerns that, that we often hear uh, is that the spot market could potentially rise as more people use this. I mean, in some ways now we've, we've inaugurated a number of people to, to the spot club. Um, what happens when that spot price goes up? Like, are you concerned about what are you going to do? I know, Linwood, you, you've thought yes. about this a lot, right? Uh, sure, I'll take it. Um, so uh, going back to our, our, demo, our, you know, our story is that we had to kind of brute force it to get it done. Um, but we, so if you think about it, it cost, cost analysis, uh, your opportunity cost of programming time to make your stuff more efficient or programming time, uh, you know, or the money you're spending on, on spot for hardware, brute force. And so as, as the price goes up on the brute force method, we'll just spend a little more money on programming, possibly get your algorithms um, more efficient. Um, and then ultimately, you've, you've taken advantage of Spot today. You've, you've gotten in the game of making your application distributed. And I mean, there's just no way that distributed computing is going anywhere. So it's going to set you up uh, regardless of the price or the provider. You're going to be sort of set um, for the future going forward. I mean, I think, I think for us, uh, you know, the same is true, is take advantage of it now while it's available, and, but you can't build your margins off spot. You know, you can't, I think it would be a risky proposition to build a business that's predicated on the existence of spot um, or on the, the gap between on-demand prices and spot now. Um, so, you know, you want to be providing value beyond just that cost savings, and I think that's kind of key for us. You don't want to. Yeah, you certainly don't. I mean... I can't say, I, you know, maybe this doesn't work for everybody, but, you know, you certainly don't want to be competing on cost. You want to be competing on innovation. Um. So, go ahead. If you... so, so, yeah, so, so we, we are very worried about it, but the, I think that the, this is up to us as a group to, to be able to um, create efficiencies in the market, to create pressure on Amazon and other providers uh, by allowing our systems to run seamlessly on any system and on any type of cloud, which is exactly what we and many, many people in the open source community are doing. So if we do our job, uh, our jobs, uh, Amazon will keep providing us service because they want our money. It's kind of simple. Yeah. So one of the ways that we're thinking about it, uh, just internally, and there's no perfect answer to this question, um, is really predicated on the fact that um, you know, there are a lot of uh, valuable propositions associated with Spot. So at the very beginning, when I asked the question, you know, what is the value associated with Spot, sometimes they're using it to speed up their application. Sometimes they're using it to scale out. Uh, and cost always came in as you know, another benefit, but you often heard it as one of the extra benefits that they get out of it. 
Um, so it's, it's certainly one of those things where you can use it to kind of innovate and keep moving forward. Our hope is that uh, we'll keep uh, scaling the overall Amazon EC2 business such that the unused capacity will still be out there and Spot will actually be a very large market. So you can imagine X percent of a very large market, uh, a very large footprint is a very big number. Um, and so we see this as something that's gonna hopefully be available for a very long time. And um, I, can, I can, yeah, I'll stop there. So um, with that said, I wanted to wrap up today first by saying thank you to our entire panel. Um, I know that they've, they've flown from all sorts of places, mostly California, but all sorts of places to come out here today. Um, but second of all, I wanted to close with, uh, we had a competition, a spot-a-thon, um, the very first one, uh, and I wanted to announce the results of that. And so um, the spot-a-thon spot was an open-ended programming challenge where we invited um, the community to uh, kind of submit their spot applications and say, here are the cool things that, uh, that we're doing with spot and um, the scale that people are doing things at, the savings that they're doing it at. And while I'm not going to go into all the details of the applications and things that we saw, um, I, I definitely have to say that we were quite impressed by uh, the quality of applications. Um, so with that said, the, the judging actually was up to the last minute. Uh, just we were all kind of debating about different things. And so um, there are uh, two honorable mentions which were very close to hitting the very top two uh, award spots. Uh, the very first is our very own panelists, uh, Numerate, uh, Numerix. Um, and uh, obviously they've done a, a great job of reducing their overall costs. I think in here it says over 80%. Um, which is pretty substantial savings. Um, the second honorable mention goes to Lawrence Berkeley National Lab uh, for their turbine service gateway. Um, so basically what they're doing is they're working for the Department of Energy's carbon capture simulation um, and running tens of thousands of simulations on hundreds of spot nodes, uh, saving upwards of 70%. And I know that uh, they actually have a representative today, Joshua uh, Boverhoof. Did I get that right? Are you in the audience? Um, so uh, if... If anyone's interested to learn more about what they're doing, I would encourage you uh, to talk to Jonathan. Um, Josh. Uh, sorry. Uh, and then uh, now in terms of uh, the, the actual uh, top two award prizes, uh, the runner-up and winner of $1,000 um, in AWS credits is the Princeton Consultants High Frequency Trading Financial Research Application, <laughs> OptiSpotter. <laughs> and uh, that mouthful uh, is basically um, helping um, startup hedge funds compete against larger firms by enabling them to rapidly and inexpensively tune and test their, their trading algorithms, uh, consuming tens of thousands of instant hours per month on spot and saving upwards of 90%. Um, just a very fascinating um, application, which we hope to detail on, on the blogs um, coming up relatively soon. And finally, for the grand prize winner um, of 2,500 in AWS credits is uh, PyCloud's platform as a service for HPC, um, batch computing and scientific computing. Uh, so they are running roughly 85% of their workload on spot. Uh, it's provisioning um, server about 50% more servers at the same cost as if they were running all on demand. Um, it improves their, their customer uh, satisfaction by delivering results 33% faster uh, and saving over 65% uh, relative to the on-demand price. Um, they've served over, um, uh, served thousands of researchers um, and processed over 100 million uh, jobs actually working on that. So um, the, the blog post should come out relatively soon with a little bit more details, but um, again, it was a, a great spot-a-thon. Thank you all for coming to this presentation and uh, definitely apply to Spot Labs today. Thanks so much. And thanks to our panel. Excellent. Try to get off here slowly, so.